We've all seen the blue and white modified 747s that carry the US president. These are commonly known as Air Force One with the public. But technically, only when the president is on board is it called Air Force One, the call sign of any Air Force aircraft carrying the president. More than just a transport aircraft, the jumbo jets are fully equipped offices and residences for the president, with working space for key staff and even an onboard press contingent. This video looks back at the previous aircraft used for presidential transport, as well as the introduction of the Air Force One callsign and concept. We'll also explore the current 747s and their planned replacement in 2024. The iconic blue and white 747s are what most would associate with a callsign Air Force One. These particular jets, however, were only introduced in 1990. Of course, American presidents have been flying long before that. The first president to take to the air was Theodore Roosevelt, although he had left office by the time. In October 1910, he flew at a county fair at Kinlock Field in Missouri as a passenger in a Wright Flyer aircraft, seven years after the Wright brothers made the first powered flight. Before the Second World War, presidential air travel was rare. Flights, when they did happen, were with commercial aircraft. Franklin Roosevelt became the first serving president to fly. He flew to Morocco in 1943 on a Boeing 314, crewed by Pan American World Airways. The idea of a dedicated presidential aircraft operated by the military came in 1943. The first proposed aircraft was a modified C-87 Liberator Express aircraft called the Guess Where II. This operated until 1945 and carried several VIP passengers, including the First Lady, but was not deemed safe enough for presidential transport. The first aircraft that was approved was a modified Douglas C-54 Skymaster, nicknamed the Sacred Cow. Officially, it was called the Flying White House, but earned its nickname due to the security surrounding it. President Franklin Roosevelt used this once, in 1945, to attend the Yalta Conference in the Soviet Union for discussions regarding post-war Europe. The Sacred Cow was then replaced in 1947 with a C-118 Liftmaster, a military-modified Douglas DC-6 aircraft. This aircraft, known as Independence, was equipped with a stateroom and seats for up to 24 passengers. In the years after Second World War, aviation expanded significantly. Presidential travel was no exception. President Eisenhower introduced several large propeller aircraft for dedicated presidential travel. The first of these was a Lockheed Constellation aircraft named Columbine II after the First Lady's home state national flower. Soon after its introduction in January 1953, it became the first aircraft to take the callsign Air Force One. This happened following an incident where Air Force 8610 carrying the president was confused with commercial flight Eastern Airlines A610. Columbine II was replaced after just two years with Columbine III, a Lockheed Super Constellation, and went on to fly with Pan American World Airways. It was stored in 1964, but later restored for Eisenhower's 100th birthday celebrations in 1989. It was sold to a private company in 2016, which continues restoration work, aiming to restore it to its original appearance. In 1959, presidential air travel entered the jet age with the Boeing 707. President Eisenhower oversaw the introduction of the first jet. This was a Boeing C-137 Stratoliner, derived from the Boeing 707, and modified as VC-137 for presidential service. This first aircraft, Special Air Mission, or SAM 970, carried Eisenhower on several overseas trips, including a final tour covering 35,000 kilometers around Asia in December 1959. It was not long before SAM 970 was replaced by an upgraded Boeing 707. SAM 26000, a VC-137C, entered service in October 1962 under President Kennedy. It served as the main transport for three presidents, Kennedy, Johnson, and Nixon. It introduced the blue and white color scheme still recognizable today. French-American designer Raymond Lowy created this scheme. He is also credited with the TWA logo as well as work on BP, Shell, Greyhound, and plenty of US railroad designs. SAM 26000 was replaced by SAM 27000 in 1972. It served seven presidents up to its retirement in 2001. The presidents were Nixon, Ford, Carter, Reagan, George H. Bush, Bill Clinton, and George W. Bush. 
George H. W. Bush was officially the last president to use it as the primary Air Force One. However, it continued in service as a backup aircraft after that, hence the late 2001 retirement. All three 707s that served as Air Force One have been preserved. SAM 970 is on display at the Museum of Flight in Seattle, SAM 26000 is on display at the US Air Force Museum in Ohio, and SAM 27000 is displayed at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library and Museum in California. Two 747s then replaced the 707s in 1990. Officially named SAM 28000 and SAM 29000, these are modified 747-200 aircraft with Boeing designator VC-25A. The two identical 747s were ordered as replacements during President Reagan's term. The only other proposal came from McDonnell Douglas with a modified DC-10 aircraft. The VC-25As were completed in 1986, costing $325 million each. They first flew in May 1987. Delays with the interior electronics meant they did not enter service until 1990, after Reagan had passed the office to George H. Bush. They kept the same livery designed by Raymond Lowy with the previous 707s. First Lady Nancy Reagan designed the interiors, apparently to recall her native U.S. Southwest home. The aircraft features plenty of impressive features including defense countermeasures to disrupt heat-seeking missiles, technology to jam radar, and extensive communications facilities. Many more features, of course, remain secret. If you're liking this video so far, why not click subscribe and hit the like button? Oh, and be sure to click that notification bell too. Unlike other 747s, it also adds the ability to refuel in flight. This is useful not just for longer flights, but also to keep it airborne in the event of issues on the ground. The VC-25A offers 4,000 square feet of space. It's a true White House in the sky, with sleeping and working space for the presidential family, a conference room, working and meeting areas for staff, and a press section. The upper deck is for crew. Behind the cockpit are a crew lounge and a full communication center, which handles communication on the aircraft and with the ground. The main deck is for the president, staff, guests, and press. The protocol is that passengers can move aft of their seat location, but not forward. And there's plenty of secret service security throughout the deck to enforce this. In the nose of the aircraft is a private suite for the president and his family. This has been a feature since Nixon introduced it on the 707. Behind this suite is the president's office with a large chair, desk and sofas for guests. The aircraft also has a large medical suite. Air Force One always flies with a doctor and nurse on board. Moving through the fuselage, there are many offices, including a room for senior staffers and a conference room with eight large chairs. Beyond this are several separated cabins for office staff, invited guests and, at the rear, press that travel with the president. Like many other 747s around the world, the two VC-25A aircraft will soon be retired. The US Air Force requested proposals for three replacement aircraft in 2009. There was initial interest from Airbus to offer the A380. However, it pulled out as it believed it would not make financial sense to build the aircraft in the US. This left just Boeing, and after considering the 787 as an option, the 7478 was chosen. In 2016, the Air Force confirmed the contract for Boeing and reduced it to two aircraft, with plenty more requests from incoming President Trump to look at cost reduction options. As part of the effort to reduce costs, it was announced in 2017 that two 7478i aircraft ordered by Russia's Transaero would be purchased and modified. Transaero originally ordered these in 2011, but it ceased operations in 2015 before taking delivery of them. They had been stored at the Southern California Logistics Airport in the Mojave Desert before relocation for modification. Of course, refitting these will be faster and less costly than building new aircraft, but there is still a lot to do. In 2018, a contract for $3.9 billion to modify these into VC-25B variants was announced. The aircraft were flown to Boeing in Texas in spring 2019, and modification work began in February 2020. The aircraft are expected to be delivered in 2024. The first phase of aircraft modification involves cutting out large skin and structure areas in both the forward and aft lower lobes of the aircraft, and then installing two newly manufactured super panels. The super panels contain structural upgrades and cutouts for the VC-25B lower lobe doors, including internal air stairs for mission requirements. U.S. Air Force Life Cycle Management Center 
Plenty more upgrades will follow, including for communications and defense systems, medical and catering facilities, and a full interior refit. We have yet to see what the aircraft will look like inside, but some reports suggest that President Trump has called for a more lavish interior and larger beds. Another major change with the VC-25B aircraft could be the livery. Even though Trump will never fly on the new aircraft, he has been heavily involved in the order and design. In June 2019, he indicated he wanted to change to a new red, white, and blue livery. This would be the first change since Lowy's design was adopted in 1962. Trump showed this new design in a tweet from ABC News in 2019. People have been quick to note how similar this looks to British Airways' former Landor livery. This red, white, and blue scheme was repainted on a 747 as part of celebrations in 2019. So, once these new 747-8i aircraft arrive, hopefully in 2024, what will happen to the current 747s? It's doubtful that they will end up stored in the desert, like many commercial 747s currently being retired. Many previous Air Force Ones have been preserved or displayed, and while nothing is confirmed yet, it is likely the 747s will see the same future. The George and Barbara Bush Foundation has expressed interest in taking one after retirement, potentially displaying it in the Bush Library and Museum in Texas. The US president's transport is by far the most recognizable, but there are of course plenty of other countries that have something in place for their leaders. Here are a few of the ones Simple Flying has looked at before. Russia uses an Ilyushin 96 with eight of them in the government's aircraft fleet. Four of them are equipped for head of state transport. They're lavishly equipped with rugs, tapestries, and even a decent-sized gym. India took delivery of a new Boeing 777 in October 2020 with one more due soon. These are the first dedicated planes for use by the government and Prime Minister, who previously flew with Air India. Like the US Air Force One, they're equipped with extensive communication, defense, and radar jamming technology. Germany replaced its aging Airbus A340 government aircraft with an A350 in 2020, the first of which was delivered in May. This will feature a new cabin with extensive office and meeting space, but this is yet to be revealed. The UK Royal Air Force operates an Airbus A330 for use by the government and Prime Minister. It's significantly less extravagant than Air Force One, fitted out with business-class-style seating by Prime Minister David Cameron, but has no suites or extensive office space. And finally, Mexico is an interesting case. The government operates a luxurious Boeing 787 for presidential travel, but the current president, Andres Manuel López Obrador, sees this as lavish and wasteful, apparently preferring to travel commercially. Since 2019, he's been trying to sell it. Would you like to share any facts or comments about US presidential transport or any of the Air Force One aircraft? Let us know in the comments. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.